I'm so glad I came to school today. I came to school today. I came to school today. I'm so glad I came to school today. I came to be with all my friends. I'm so glad I came to Facebook Live. I came to Facebook Live. I came to Facebook Live. I'm so glad I came to Facebook Live. I came to learn with all my friends. And thank you for joining me today. I've got some great ideas to help you focus children's attention when you are doing your online classrooms. And believe me, <laughs> I know I know how painful and what a struggle and challenge that can be because I think I've seen children become less and less focused as we've gone on with this. Yes, I've seen them. Um, I've done enough Zoom meetings uh, to see the fingers in the nose and they fall asleep on you and things like that. So, you know, these things are not going to work with every child, but they might work with one or two and and that's what we're aiming for. So one of the things that we know from Brain Research 101 is the brain likes anything that is new or different or novel. And so, you know, if you can change your name, good morning, boys and girls, or, or you can, you know, put on a silly little mustache and nose or glasses or a hat or something like that, that will often get children's attention. Um, I love puppets. And, you know, even if you don't have a real puppet, Mr. Sock, and you cut the front and back off a cereal box, and then Mr. Sock, oh, Mr. Sock wanted me to tell you good day. And um, one of the things I've learned is that if you have the puppet whisper to you, then you can say it to the children. You don't have to use a silly voice or anything like that. So another little attention grabber. Um, a, a good cheer to get children's attention is hocus pocus everybody focus so the teacher goes boys and girls when i go hocus pocus i want you to get your focus goggles on and say everybody focus let's practice that hocus pocus everybody focus and there's something about having them put their little focus goggles on that really helps them attend to what you want them to look at um, I would take this one and I would do it all the time you don't want to do lots of different uh, little attention grabbers because then it confuses them but if you do one all the time then it becomes what the brain experts say an attention grabber the minute they hear hocus pocus they know to tune in to you um, another strategy that you can use are callbacks. You could say like, hands on top, and the children respond, everybody stop, or ready, spaghetti, or macaroni and cheese, freeze please, or one of my favorites, the McDonald's, da 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 da, and the children say, I'm loving it. So, you know, take these and make them work for you and uh, use these to help get the children's attention. Um, another thing that you can do is use their name. It's something about saying their name that it really perks them up. Or you could even sing this song to if you're happy and you know it. If your name is Joey, wave to me. If your name is Marcia, smile at me. If your name is Gregory, blink at me. If your name is Joseph, stomp your feet. And you can just say different things with the children's names to pull them in. Um, cheers, you know, I, I love cheers. And I think most of you who are watching know about the little cheer cards I have. And you can go to my website and watch a video of me doing those and download these. Um, but one of the ones that works really well with children is sparkles in a rainbow. Because if their hands are someplace you do not want them and you don't want to stay in front of the screen, get your finger out of your nose. And you can say something like this, boys and girls, show me your sparkles. I need everybody's sparkles. Show me your sparkles. And a rainbow. Rainbow. Sparkles and a rainbow. That is called positive distraction. Instead of focusing on what you don't want them to do, you give them something that they will want to do. Um, another cheer that I use to get children quiet is um, the hamburger cheer. Boys and girls, make your hamburger. Put it on the skillet. Is it done? Not yet. Is it done? Not yet. Is it done? Well done. Now, 
I've done enough Zoom classroom visits that um, I know that the finger plays work really well with a lot of children. There's something about activating their hands that gets them a little bit more involved. So this is a little finger play called the finger band. And you'll see why I like this one. It's kind of a tricky one. So boys and girls, put your finger band behind your back. Here we go. The finger band is coming to town, coming to town, coming to town. The finger band is coming to town so early in the morning. This is the way we play our drums, play our drums, play our drums. This is the way we play our drums so early in the morning. This is the way we twirl our hats, twirl our hats, and then this is the way we play our horns. And then I let children tell me other instruments in the band. They'll say things like a piano, guitar, whatever they say, we just do it. And then uh, the last verse is the finger band is going. and you just pull them in. When you lower your voice, it's just gonna pull them in a little bit. Um, here's a little chair that I like to do. It crosses the midline, and um, it's a little echo thing, so boys and girls repeat after me. Thumbs up, thumbs up, across the chest, across the chest. Pat on the back, pat on the back, cause we're the best, cause we're the best. And when you get them like this, it helps center them and helps them focus a little bit better. Um, you can play a game like Simon Says. Simon Says, put your hands in the air. Simon Says, put your hands on your shoulders. Simon Says, put your hands on your knees. But instead of saying, Simon, use your name. Miss Johnson says, put your hands on your ears. Miss Johnson says, put your hands on your toes. Oh, you didn't put your hands on your toes. So you can just change it up a little bit. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about that you could use when you're doing your online meetings to engage the children is have them show you their Palm Pilot and they can take their Palm Pilot and you could ask them, you know, what does dog start with and they write it on their palm pilot and then they show it to you of course you can't see anything but they are engaged and and it's a multi-sensory thing you could give them a math problem they write the answer you could give them a word to spell there's lots of different things that they can do on their palm pilot and um one other idea i was looking through some old blogs and i saw this i thought oh man this is perfect for um, online le classes. Um, and what you do, if you take jumbo craft sticks and you write the children's names on these and color one and red and one and green. So you would start off by putting all of their sticks in the can <coughs> like this. And then you would start your day saying, tell me something good. And you would model, tell me something good and the teacher tells something good. And then you choose for three friends, so let's say, Oh, Hank, can you tell me something good today? And then after Hank has had a turn, you put the stick in the can with the red on top. So you could do two or three kids each day, let them tell you something good. And you could prep this with saying, okay, boys and girls, let's see whose stick I'm going to pull. Everybody be thinking of something good to tell me. Um, and then when all the sticks are red, you turn them over and you start all over with the green. These are, are good um, in, in the classroom or on Zoom. A lot of these things, you know, you're going to be using when you go back to the classroom, we hope. Um, not too far away. Um, now, I also wanted to share a few little simple games that are engaging with children. And last week, I told you how Laura does musical chairs and she has the kids get the chair and she plays some music and they walk around the chair. And when the music stops, um, she will hold up like a dot card or something and they have to sit down and try to write that number. Well, I was thinking you could use musical chairs for any age level. You could use it for the older kids. Um, when the music stops, they sit down and write a spelling word. Um, you could use it for phonics, um, hold up a picture. When they sit down, they write the sound. You could use it for math facts um, that you have four plus two when they sit down and they write the answer. With the older kids, you could use it for review questions that you did a unit on space or you know, history or whatever you're working on, but you could ask the question and they sit down and they write it down. Um, whenever we write things, that helps us remember them. So this is a great way for them to move and to do that at the same time. Now, um, I was talking to my granddaughter who did a virtual field trip last week, a virtual sleepover last weekend. And I said, what are you going to do? And she said, well, 
well, we're going to play hangman and we're going to play Pictionary. And I said, Kalina, those are things I'm going to share with teachers on my uh, Facebook Live this coming week. And my daughter said, you know what, Mom, these kids are figuring it out. They're taking old things and adapting and, and figuring it out themselves. Now, um, this is like hangman, but it's a little bit more positive than saying hangman. Um, you can call it silly man or, you know, and, and when I do it at Halloween, I turn it into a pumpkin. You can do different things. So you know how to do that. You write the, the, the blanks for the number of word, letters in the word. And then as the children call out letters, if the letter is in the word, you write it up here. And if it isn't in the word, then you start drawing the figures on the little funny face. And so this one, um, and then you can keep a bone pop with the letters you've already used. Uh, another idea is the tic-tac-toe frame. They make a tic-tac-toe frame and you have them write letters, numbers, whatever, sight words, and then uh, you randomly call out different letters, numbers, sight words, and they color them in if they have them on their phone. Now, it's interesting that this morning I got a little message on Facebook Live from Nancy Walsh, and she does the same thing with bingo. Um, and one side of the bingo card, she has the children write letters, uh, numbers from 1 through 20, and on the back of the bingo card, they write 20 letters any way that they want to, and then they can play bingo that way. So, you know, these are great games uh, to play and keep them engaged. Um, another game, and I used to play this in my classroom, but this is good for um, Zoom lessons. Um, it's called Show Me. So the kids can have a little set of numbers or a set of shapes or whatever age level you're working at and whatever skill you want to reinforce. They have their little cards and they keep them in their zip bag. And then they lay them out and um, an easy one for the younger kids. I'm going to clap my hands and you show me how many. So and then they would all pick this up. And you can quickly glance around the screens and you can see, you know, who's got it right. So it keeps them busy and it's a good way for you to do assessment. Um, but you could also do this with sounds. You could do this with uh, digraphs. You could use this with different questions you want to ask. Show me. It just keeps them busy and gives them something to do. So um, I hope you've gotten some new ideas today. Uh, I wanted to mention I got an email from somebody asking for some ideas for a promotion from pre-k to k so if you do that and you want to put it on my facebook page that would be great and um, i have other ideas that teachers have shared over the week things that they do to celebrate and games that they play and i will have that tomorrow on my blog so today on my blog you'll find all of these attention grabbers and tomorrow i will have the games and different things like that so i probably won't be doing facebook live for a couple of weeks because i think most of you are at the end of the school year so um i'll pick up again and and let me know how I can do, how I can help you. If you just write down, you know, um, what topics you're interested in or things like that, I can do Facebook Live for you and blogs for you on that. And also excited, um, two big conferences coming up this summer. They are free, free. They are online. And um, one of them is with Vanessa Levin. It's um, Soar to Success. And that focus is preschool and pre-K. And the other one is Deanna Jumps, Get Your Teach On, G-Y-T-O. And um, both of these are free virtual conferences. And um, I'm going to have information about how to uh, sign up for these on my blog on Sunday. And so, um, I mean, what an opportunity to uh, listen to some of the top um, educational experts in the country for free. I hope you all take advantage of that. I can't wait to watch it myself. So um, it is time to say goodbye to all my friends. It is time to say goodbye to all my friends. It is time to say goodbye. Give a smile and wink your eye. It is time to say goodbye to all my friends. Goodbye, friends. Be safe, be well, be happy. God bless.